Today, I have had the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Peter Angels, Linda Core Anderson, Professor of Surgery and Surgical Ethics, Chief of Endocrine Surgery, Vice Chair for Ethics, Professional Development and Wellness, and Associate Director of the McLean Center for Clinical Medical Ethics at the University of Chicago. Dr. Angelos has been a prominent advocate for the integration of ethics into surgical education, and he has trained over 70 surgeons who have completed the McLean Fellowship for Clinical Ethics. He has more than 200 peer-reviewed publications, including the books Ethical Issues in Cancer Patient Care and Ethical Issues in Surgical Care. He is also a regular contributor to the ACS Surgery News with a column on surgical ethics entitled The Right Choice. He is a governor of the American College of Surgeons and member of the ACS Committee on Ethics, president of the U.S. chapter of the International Surgical Society, and past president of the American Association of Endocrine Surgeons. In this interview, Dr. Angelo shares with us his thoughts about the importance of ethics in surgical care. Good morning, Dr. Angelos. Good morning. Can you explain in brief what is surgical ethics? Sure. Uh, surgical ethics is really the set of ethical issues that are associated with um, taking care of surgical patients. And so this primarily involves things like um, informed consent, uh, the doctor-patient relationship. Uh, it has a lot to do with how decisions are made for patients and specifically um, how to manage complications and what to do when there are complications. And sometimes it involves uh, deciding not to do surgery because perhaps uh, the risks are too high. What are the peculiarities of the surgeon-patient relationship? So I think the surgeon-patient relationship is uh, not necessarily unique, but pretty distinctive in the world of medical care. And, and the reason that I say that is surgeons are always asking patients to place an incredible amount of trust in them. And that high degree of trust that we as surgeons ask our patients to place in us is something that I think is very distinctive. And if you think about it, we ask patients not only to trust us to care for them, but to trust us to care for them when they are in the most vulnerable position possible, when they have no opportunity to change their mind, when they have no chance of even um, making a different decision. And I really think that that level of trust and the high risk of so many of the things that we do really makes that relationship very distinctive. And the one other thing that I would say is that um, the things that surgeons do to and for their patients every day are things that we would go to jail for in any other circumstance. And so, so I think that in surgery, we often lose track of how significant that relationship is and how deep the trust is that we have to engender in our patients. What do you think are the major ethical challenges that we face in modern surgery? Yeah, I think the today and moving forward, I think that we are faced with a number of really um, unique challenges. I think that uh, in modern surgery, we are constantly having to think about uh, what's the best thing for this patient. So years ago, it was a little bit easier because we could think about what are all of the possible things that we can do to try to help our patient. And we would generally do everything we could do. And frequently there wasn't a lot that we could do. I think today we have so many more options. And especially if you think about in the intensive care unit, we have so many more things that we can do for patients that often deciding what's the best thing for this specific patient 
given their comorbidities, given their values with respect to what they hope for as the ultimate outcome. Uh, I think these are questions that make um, that that make contemporary surgical care more complicated, and really push surgeons to be to be much more cognizant of their uh, patient's role in the decision making. So, I think that years ago, you know, we used to think about that the the surgeon knows best, um, and this paternalistic approach to healthcare worked for many, many years. But I think today it's very hard to know what is the best thing for a patient when we have so many options, many of which may not really fit with the patient's long-term goals. Do you think that all surgical training programs uh, should have a designated um, surgical ethics education? Every surgical resident, every training program in surgery today I think is in fact modeling uh, ethical behavior in the care of surgical patients. Now, I think it may not often be pulled out as a separate issue. It may not often be um, focused on as a specific ethical dimension, but I think that we are, all of our residents in every training program are in fact being um, taught about how to interact with patients, how to communicate with patients, how to give bad news, how to obtain informed consent. So in that sense, I really do think that surgical ethics is being taught. I think that if the question, if we shift the question slightly and say, should it be specifically called out as now this is an important uh, dimension of surgical care. This is surgical ethics, and it is something that we should pay attention to. I would say yes. I think that it is, there's so much that needs to be learned in surgical education, and I think that um, there's value in calling out the ethical dimension of the care that we provide our patients separate from the other things. That is not to say that surgical ethics is separate from surgical care. I think that these are combined. But from an educational point of view, I do think it's valuable to um, specify that there are some decisions that we make that are surgical decisions, and they are based on medical conditions and um, it's related to anatomy and physiology. But then there are also decisions that we make with our patients that go beyond anatomy and physiology, that are really related to that particular patient's um, values and what are the long-term goals that that patient has. And that's the aspect of it that I think is really the ethical dimension. And I think that by specifying there are certain surgical decisions, but there are also ethical decisions that surgeons have to make with their patients, I think that's very important. And I do think that it would be valuable for us to be a little bit more deliberate about which is a surgical question and which is an ethics question. Because surgical questions, usually are best answered by surgeons. I think frequently ethical questions require the input of the patient or the family to understand the values that the patient or the surrogate decision makers have. Talking about education in surgical ethics, what's the approach at the University of Chicago? Well, we have um, taken sort of a multifaceted approach. And so um, the first thing is that we try to set aside time for a dedicated uh, discussion of at least one case once a month at Surgical M&M Conference that's focused on the ethical issues of that case. And that's very important because that's where it's a standard M&M with the faculty and the residents and 
Um, I, I really think that that's critical. Um, the second thing is that we have had um, regular, uh, dedicated surgical ethics case discussions. And so these are done in conjunction with uh, the ethics program, uh, but all of the um, surgical faculty and residents are in, invited. And I think that that's valuable to spend a little bit more on time in depth thinking about the ethical issues in a case. Um, and I mentioned the ethics fellowship. Uh, so, so many of our surgical residents, as well as fellows and um, some faculty, have uh, pursued fellowship training in clinical ethics. And this is through the McLean Center for Clinical Medical Ethics, which has the oldest and uh, is uh, by far the largest clinical ethics uh, training program in the U.S. Um, so this is a program where um, fellows spend uh, uh, part-time, one year, focus on clinical ethics. And um, I really think that it is a wonderful opportunity for our surgical residents, fellows, as well as faculty, some coming from other institutions, um, to get that in-depth um, familiarity with the historical precedents and really the language and terminology around surgical ethics so that they can hopefully um, lead programs at their own institutions in the future. What do you think is the future of surgical ethics and um, how would it affect the future generation of surgeons? Well, I hope the future of surgical ethics is bright. Um, and by that, I mean, I hope that uh, increasingly surgeons will take seriously these issues because I really do think that surgeons have been practicing ethical care of their patients for generations. And I anticipate that that will continue in the future. I think what will be increasing challenges in the future are several things. Number one, innovation in surgery is critical. That's how we move the field forward. But uh, figuring out how to bring innovative techniques into the mainstream while maintaining patient safety, I think that's an important ethical issue that I think needs to be addressed. I do think that as the genetic, um, as the genetic, uh, causes of diseases are increasingly known, I think in the years to come, we will be doing more prophylactic surgery. I think we'll be doing operations not for thyroid cancer, for example, but for the predisposition for thyroid cancer. And the reason that I think this is important from an ethical perspective is I do think that the dynamics the, the nature of informed consent for an operation to treat a known illness that a patient has today is a little bit different from the discussion of risk benefits and alternatives when it is the potential to get a malignancy in the future. And so I, I do think that this is something that increasingly surgeons will have to um, address. Um, and I, I think that the, the last thing is that I, I think there's a threat to surgeons today that we generate, we generate large amounts of income for hospitals and health systems and departments, uh, less so for ourselves these days because there are so many fewer surgeons who are in, uh, in private practice models. But the generation of RVUs is primarily by surgeons being in the operating room and doing operations. And I think that there is a potential risk that surgeons will be pushed to spend more time operating and less time interacting with patients. And I think that if we spend less time interacting with patients, we get pushed to become increasingly technicians. And I think if we ever allow ourselves to be purely technicians so that we're not really focused on, you know, is this really the best thing for the patient, but rather how can I do this operation 
and how can I do it safely? Rather than in the big picture, does it make sense for this patient? Then I think that we'll really have missed something. And then, then I think we will cease to be the good doctors that surgeons traditionally have been and I hope will continue to be in the future. Great. Thanks so much. Thank you.